morning. I am Technical Sergeant Skylar Cooper, and I will be your narrator for today's ceremony. This event is a celebration of the remarkable achievements of these graduating airmen and Space Force professionals. Over the last seven and a half weeks, these men and women have transformed from civilians into motivated, disciplined warriors with the foundation to serve in the world's greatest air and space forces. Once these graduates leave basic military training, they will proceed to technical training to garner the skills necessary to perform in their unique specialties. They will then transition to numerous bases around the world, some working directly with our sister services. Of the hundreds of thousands of American citizens that enter the workforce each year, less than 1% have joined the ranks of the United States military. These airmen and Space Force professionals have reached a milestone in their military journey and will require your continued support to assist them in their future endeavors. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the arrival of our official party and the playing of the musical arms. Audrey! Achievement. 
We ask that you would bless the young men and women who have tirelessly worked to complete this challenging training and have given so much of themselves to wear the uniform of the world's greatest air and space forces. We thank you for everyone who played a role to make this day and ceremony a reality, for the determination of the graduates standing here this morning, for the love, support, of family, and friends, the sacrifices they have made to make this day possible. We are also grateful for the dedication, devotion, and skill of the MTIs, the three 20th Training Squadron staff who have dedicated their time and talents to train and prepare these men and women to lead, bless and guide their lives and careers. We now ask your protection and guidance on the lives of these airmen and space professionals. Fill their hearts with gator pride as they now witness the fruits of their labor. Give them all strength to weather the challenges of life and enduring spirit to persevere through the adversity we all face from time to time. May they lead and serve with truth and remain steadfast as guardians of freedom and justice. We pray they will always bring honor to their country, their families, and to themselves. May you be with all our military personnel serving around the globe, protecting our freedoms. In your holy name we pray, amen. Thank you, Chaplain Harris. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to today's basic military training graduation ceremony. We would like to introduce our distinguished guests, beginning with the hosts for today's ceremony. The Commander and Superintendent, Air Force Basic Military Training, Colonel Michael Newsom and Chief Master Sergeant Leary Gaetano. Barbara Barrett, the 25th Secretary of the Air Force. Chief of Space Force Operations, General John J. Raymond. Senior Enlisted Advisor to the Space Force, Chief Master Sergeant Roger Toberman. The Commander, Air Education and Training Command, Lieutenant General Brad Webb. The Command Chief, Air Education and Training Command, Chief Master Sergeant Eric Thompson. The Command, Second Air Force, Major General Andrea Tullis. The Command Chief, Second Air Force, Chief Master Sergeant Adam Beasley. The Commander in Command Chief, 37th Training Corps, Colonel Bucky Wilson, and Chief Master Sergeant Savon Blake. The Commander and Superintendent from the Graduating Squad, 320th Training Squad, Lieutenant Colonel Adam Carter and Chief Master Sergeant Pamela Barnes. Although time does not permit us to introduce all of our distinguished guests, the 737 Training Corps is proud to welcome each of you. We hope you enjoy today's ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, Chief Master Sergeant Toberman will now come forward and say a few words. Secretary, thank you for being here. Thank you for everything that you do for our airmen and for our space professionals. You've been a fantastic leader and a fantastic partner, and just really appreciate you taking time to come here and spend time with us today. Thanks, Mel. General Raymond, our Chief of Space Operations, thank you as well for being here on this historic day. Sir, I wouldn't work for anybody else. You're a fantastic boss. You're the perfect person to lead our Space Force, and it's such an honor to have you here today and, and uh, to be along for the ride. Thank you very much. Colonel Newsom, Chief Guyton, you have made all of this happen, and I couldn't say thank you enough, so thanks from the bottom of my heart. It's been great to spend time with you. Your leadership is incredible, and just thanks uh, for hosting us and, 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 uh, and being here today. 
and mostly for our loved ones and families around the world. Uh, thank you for joining us. We certainly wish you could be filling the stands, but we're glad that you're out there uh, virtually and you're here to celebrate with us today. As we say congratulations to our graduates. Congratulations on what you've accomplished and good luck on what's to come. I've got one piece of advice and only one piece of advice. And that's to remember what we taught you. Remember what you learned. But not just the things that were baked into the curriculum. Not just the things you were supposed to learn. But importantly, I'm talking about the things that you taught yourselves, the things that you learned on your own. You learned what it's like to struggle and what it's like to overcome. You learn what it's like to need help and find the humility to ask for it. You learn what it's like to answer that call for help from a teammate and how it changes you both. You learned pride of a job well done and the greater pride of a team doing well. You learned starting the day with a little exercise isn't necessarily a bad thing. You learned that trust, real trust, is not built around where you're from or what you look like. You learned in tough times, respect given is respect earned. You learned some of the most important lessons you will ever learn, lessons that will always matter. If there's one thing you can be certain of about your future, it's that it will not be perfect. The truth is, because you learned about failure, you are successful. And you didn't learn those lessons only about yourself, but about your teammates. Teammates who represent those important lessons about people, about who we are, about our warrior culture and our fighting spirit, about our true love for each other that comes above all. As you begin your Air Force and Space Force journey, you'll work on and with some of the most impressive technology in history. But it's you that matter most. You represent our decisive combat advantage. Your talent, your will, your blood and sweat, the weapon system that matters most lives and breathes. Nothing is more important to us than you. Never stop caring for your teammates. Never stop caring for yourself. Never forget you above all else matter. Congratulations and good luck. Welcome to the greatest Air Force and the greatest Space Force in history, Semper Supra. Thank you, Chief Tokerman. Today's ceremony celebrates the remarkable accomplishments of this graduating class. Our nation's future rests upon the dedication of this new class of warriors who we honor today. Chief Master Marks, the Superintendent, 320th Training Squadron, will now say a few words. Find the character of air and space forces for years to come. We have the utmost faith in you, and every time you recite the Airman's Creed and adamantly proclaim that you will not fail, we believe you. As your superintendent, I hereby acknowledge your completion of all graduation requirements and have recommended to Colonel Newsom and Chief Guyton that you receive your coveted Airman and Space Force coin which signifies your transition from trainees to airmen and Space Force professionals. Congratulations.
military training instructors, you may proceed. At this part of the ceremony, the military training instructors will distribute the Venerable Airman's coin and for the first time, distinct Space Force coins to our Space Force graduates. The lore of military coins has many colorful suspected origins. However, a popular story stems from World War I, where American volunteers formed flying squadrons in France during the Great War. One of the volunteers was a wealthy lieutenant who took great pride in his service and had medallions cast in bronze, with his squadron's emblem on them. He gave those medallions to every member of his unit. Not long after, one of the pilots was shot down behind enemy lines and was captured by a German patrol. The German forces confiscated the pilot's possessions except for the pilot's medallion that he wore around his neck. While in confinement in a small French village, the captured pilot took advantage of a nighttime bombardment by the Allies. He donned civilian clothes and escaped after crossing the front lines to safety. He came across a French outpost where he was initially thought to be a saboteur until he showed them his unit coin. The French forces recognized the unit emblem, and instead of any harsher treatment, he received a bottle of wine. Today, several military units have developed their own coins and specific rules for them. Many organizations give out their unit coins to recognize outstanding performances and achievements. The coins the airmen and space professionals receive today are unique in that they originate here at the gateway to the Air Force and are only given to those who complete this rigorous course of instruction. On one side of the airman's coin, the original emblem of the Air Force resides as envisioned by General Henry Hap Arnold, one of the first military aviators and later commander of the Army Air Forces in World War II. Beneath the emblem, the year 1947, the birth date of the United States Air Force, and around the rim of the coin, the core values of the Air Force, integrity first, service before self, and excellence in all we do. Inscribed on the other side of the coin is the newly recognized emblem of the Air Force, a symbol that honors the heritage of our past and represents the promise of our future. The emblem retains the core elements of the Henry Hap Arnold emblem, the Arnold wings, and the star within a circle. The modern effect of the emblem reflects our air and space force today and into the future. Inscribed in a half circle above the contemporary Air Force emblem is the Air Force motto, Aim High, Fly, Fight, Win. And on the border of the coin, a reminder to all who see this is inscribed, awarded on the occasion of becoming an airman in the world's greatest air force. The space professional coin also has a distinctive design. On one side, it displays the original emblem of the space force, the Delta, which was first used by space units in 1961 and honors the heritage of the United States Space Force. Beneath the emblem is the year 2019, the birth date of the United States Space Force. Inscribed on the other side of the coin is the Space Force motto, Semper Supra, which translates to always above. This represents the Space Force's role in establishing, maintaining, and preserving our nation's dominance and freedom of operations in the space domain. On the coin's border is a commemorative inscription that reads, awarded on the occasion of becoming a charter member of the United States Space Force.
Congratulations, Airmen and Space Force professionals. Now, how about that squadron pride? Ladies and gentlemen, please stand as our newest Airmen and Space Force professionals recite the Airmen's Creed. I am an American Airman. I am a warrior. I advance to my nation's call. I am an American Airman. My mission is to fly, fight, and win. I am faithful to a proud heritage, a tradition of honor, and a legacy of valor. I am an American Airman. Glory and freedom and justice. My nation's sword and shield. Ladies and gentlemen, Secretary Barrett will now come forward and say a few words. Good morning. This is a day of celebration for the newest members of the Air and Space Forces, both elements of the Department of the Air Force. Today, you join the world's largest and greatest Air Force and Space Force. Congratulations. We thank the military training instructors, commanders, and staff who guided you over the last seven and a half weeks. They inspired and built the next generation of leaders. And importantly, we extend our gratitude to the family and friends who supported you through your challenging training that got you to this milestone. Graduates, in a few moments you will raise your right hand and promise to support and defend the Constitution of the United States. In that moment, you will join an Air Force heritage of integrity, service, and excellence. Let me share with you a bit about three airmen who represent those Air Force ideals. First, a venerable trailblazer, Benjamin General Benjamin O. Davis. General Davis fought prejudice, becoming one of the first African Americans to join the Army Air Corps, one of the first to attend pilot training, and he was the first African American to become an Air Force four-star general. Davis flew over 60 combat missions as the founder and commander of the famed Tuskegee Airmen. Emblematic of his commitment to equality, Davis helped President Truman develop a plan for an integrated United States Air Force. A second Airman story involves senior Airman Dustin Temple, a combat controller who displayed peerless service during a 2014 firefight in the Helmand province of Afghanistan. Despite an onslaught of enemy machine gun fire and RPGs, Airman Temple ran into open terrain with no protection, repeatedly. 
he ran to transport critically wounded teammates and retrieve supplies. He directed air assaults from 28 attack helicopters and 20 aircraft, ultimately saving the lives of 38 friendly forces. His extraordinary heroism and courage earned him the Air Force Cross. Third, Lieutenant General Susan Helms, a woman who demonstrated excellence throughout her 34-year career. General Helms was one of the United States Air Force Academy's first female graduates and flew more than 30 different types of U.S. aircraft as an Air Force test pilot, spending her next 12 years as an astronaut. General Helms was the first U.S. military woman in space. She still holds the record, the world record, for the longest spacewalk of eight hours and 56 minutes. Susan Helms is an American hero and an Air Force icon. These leaders led lives imbued with integrity, service, and excellence. Susan Helms in particular represents the caliber of talent the Air Force and Space Force are recruiting. So it is fitting that we celebrate the historic milestone of graduating the first seven trainees to the United States Space Force. Today we celebrate you who have embraced the opportunity to defend the nation as part of the nascent Space Force or the United States Air Force. I encourage you to serve with agility, to strengthen the mission with your innovations, and to be bold in defending free, open access to air and space for all benevolent actors. To all Air Force and Space Force graduates, Thank you for the commitment you are making today to protect our freedom and our American way of life. I will now turn it over to the extraordinary leader, General Jay Raymond, the Chief of Space Operations, who is the leading way, leading the way in building agile, innovative, and bold Space Force. Thank you very much. Good morning, and thank you, Secretary Baird, for your kind introduction, but more importantly, thank you for your passionate and unwavering leadership of our Air and Space Forces. I am truly honored to be here with you today and privileged to have an opportunity to speak to this graduating class. To America's newest airmen and space professionals, congratulations and welcome. In a few minutes, when you raise your hands to take the oath of office, know that our Air Force and Space Forces are stronger than we've ever been as you've joined our ranks. To the families and friends that couldn't be here today, I know your disappointment is only surpassed by the pride that you have for your new space professionals and airmen. Thank you for trusting us with your sons and daughters and for, your, and for supporting their service. They wouldn't be here today without you without your steadfast dedication to their success. When you left your airmen and space professionals here just over seven weeks ago, you left them to, an inspired, to be inspired and molded by the world-class military training instructors. But we all know those instructors built upon the foundation that you poured over the years. Thanks for instilling the value of service. The instructors dedicate their energy, their talents, and their experience to shape the future of our air and space forces. That future stands before us today. These men and women join our forces ready to meet our nation's challenges head on. And for that, I thank you all. Every basic military training class graduation is an important and inspiring event as these new airmen and space professionals represent the future of our two services. However, this graduating class is historic, as this is the first class to send seven of our nation's finest directly into the United States Space Force. If I could spend just a minute talking to the seven of you that are joining our ranks, I couldn't be more excited for you. We are just 10 days away from our first birthday, and you are a plank holder in the nation's newest service since the Air Force was established in 1947. I need you to be bold, 
You will help us build this service from the ground up. You will help us define our warfighting culture. You will build the Space Force as the first digital service. You will lay the foundation of a service that is innovative and can go fast in order to stay ahead of a significant and growing threat. And you, if deterrence fails, will fight and win the battle for space superiority, which is so vital to our nation, our allies, and our joint coalition forces. The nation expects you to deliver dominant space power. But you won't do this alone. You will do this with the airmen you are surrounded by today. As airmen and space professional, our origins will forever be entwined. We share the highest perspectives, the fastest speeds, and the farthest reach. Together, the space and air forces will deliver great advantage to our nation. We will set the joint warfighting standard and you will help us build two services that together, built on trust and confidence, are unbeatable. So to the entire class, please know how proud we are of you and how grateful we are of your service. You have already demonstrated, with the support of your family and your military training instructors, that you are capable of responding to extraordinary times with incredible strength, resilience, and fortitude. I wish you all the best in the future, and I'm excited for you. If I could trade places with you and start fresh, I would do so without batting an eye. You have the world at your fingertips. Serve well and go do great things. I look forward to serving with each and every one of you. So I just have one question for you. Are you ready to join the ranks of the world's greatest air and space forces? You, there's, there's, there's absolutely no doubt in my mind they're ready. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand. General Raymond will now administer the oath of enlistment. Now, please, ra please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your full name. Do solemnly, swear Do solemnly swear that I'll support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I'll bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that I'll obey the orders of the President of the United States and the orders of the officers appointed over me. According to, regulation, According to regulation and the Uniform Code of Military Justice. So help me God. Congratulations, Airmen, and welcome to the world's best air and space forces. Thank you, General Raymond. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the singing of the Air Force song and the departure of our official party.
from the 320th Training Squadron, Academic Excellence Flight 041, led by Mass Sergeant Jody Branson, Military Training Instructor, Hometown, Sergeant Texas. Flight 042, led by Technical Sergeant Antonio Haney, Military Training Instructor, Hometown, Newport News, Virginia. Flight 047, led by Technical Sergeant Eric Mistro, Blue Rope Master Military Training Instructor, Hometown, Houston, Texas. PT Excellence Flight 043, led by Technical Sergeant Diego Valiz, Military Training Instructor, Hometown, Yuma, California. Flight 048, led by Technical Sergeant Guillermo Alcantar, Military Training Instructor, Hometown, Big Springs, Texas.
Flight 044, led by Technical Sergeant David Lopez, Military Training Instructor, Hometown, Dale City, Virginia. Flight 045, led by Technical Sergeant Darrell Baldwin, Military Training Instructor, Hometown, Southern Pines, North Carolina. PT Excellence Flight 046, led by Technical Sergeant Joseph Rosales, Military Training Instructor Trainer, Hometown, Hempstead, Texas. Flight 049, led by Technical Sergeant William Miller, Military Training Instructor Trainer, Hometown, Camden, New Jersey. Flight 050, led by Staff Sergeant Joshua Mason, Military Training Instructor, Hometown, Sandy, Utah.
Flight 051, led by Staff Sergeant Cameron Scott, military training instructor, hometown Santa Clarita, California. <laughs>